Welcome back. We are visiting now with my dear friend and amazing life worker, Susan Pierce, who is the founder of Red Bucket Equine Rescue in Chino Hills. And Susan does life-saving work. She has been doing this since 2008. And I'll let her tell the story of the first rescue, but we're gonna talk about what's going on in the world of rescue right now and how it's all hands on deck and so much help is needed. And Susan, welcome to the show. Thank you for coming to share with us. Thank you, Lauren. I'm so grateful to be here. It's always our pleasure to talk about the life-saving work you do. So tell us a little bit about the history of Red Bucket. Well, as you mentioned, we found our first horse in 2008. She was uh, oh, just um, terribly thin. She had been starved and abused horribly. Um, they had flipped her and beaten her and she was absolutely so terrified. The plan for her was to call the meat man to come and pick her up because she was a bit too thin and definitely bloody to be run through an auction. And when I found her, oh, you know, my, my heart just went out. I couldn't get close to her though. And she was in a very small pen, but so terrified that even with gentleness and a quiet, a quiet voice, she was just uncatchable. And so I went to a local tax store. I bought a red bucket and 50 pounds of carrots and spent the next six and a half hours trying to catch her. And when I did, I never let go. And she's considered to be number one as we number our horses. And she's still here today and she's happy and a bit spoiled, a bit safe. <laughs> very much loved and very oh. safe. So she was rescue one. What number are you up to now? Well, it's a little a little deceiving. We we count the horses who come through our gates. And so we're at 419 as of this morning. Um, but of course, we spend our days helping horses who we can't bring in, um, networking them, counseling owners, and th those would be in the thousands. And this morning, so just for our viewers knowledge, our recording of this show got a little bit delayed because Susan was busy rescuing a horse. And Susan, tell us a little bit about Myla. Oh my goodness. We don't have good news to share yet other than we have her. She had been violently attacked by two pit bulls and sustained tremendous injuries to all parts of her body. Um, her precious face uh, underneath her throat was ripped. Thank goodness um, they didn't you know, actually latch onto her throat, but mostly got the muscle underneath her chin. Um, the worst injury is to her elbow where they actually bit through the elbow um, savagely um, and basically ripped all of the flesh, uh, exposing bone. And because dogs' mouths are so dirty, and the elbow is a joint, we're very concerned about a joint infection, uh, but we're not giving up. So we took her to the hospital and we are um, providing the care that she needs. So for the information, just for our viewers to understand, what, what does it cost to care for an animal like that? You've now got a 2000 pound being that is in your care and you're going to do everything in your power to help her heal and move her on to a better life. Um, what's the cost of that? Well, the hospital has quoted us between nine and twelve thousand dollars just for the hospital stay, and that's you know assuming she doesn't need surgery. It's assuming that she doesn't need even excessive fluids, which she may. So we're buckling our belt and thinking that we're, you know, we're going to be in this just beginning phase for about $12,000. And that's not uncommon. I mean, you, so let's, let's say 419 times an average of 10 to $12,000 per horse. Where does that money come from? How have you supported yourselves over the last 13 years? Oh, Lauren, the money comes from everyone who's watching, our community, people who want to link arms with us, 
and make a difference in the world, um, our community. You know, we are solely funded by donations, 100%. And people who think that you know the government has a lot of federal aid or um, grants available, that's actually a myth. Um, we, we have precious women who religiously send us a $5 check a month, usually with a handwritten note. And every year on their birthday, we'll get these notes. We're so sorry that our gift will be delayed this month. It's my birthday and my social security will be late. Uh, you know, organ, you know, just people who care. And, um, and that sustains us. And that's exactly what I want people to understand. It doesn't require a lot from each person, but a rainstorm of $1 donations, $5 donations, $10 donations goes a very, very long way in the world of animal rescue. And, and again, so Susan, these last 18 months have been to say weird and extreme is an understatement, but with the floods and fires on top of COVID, I know that people who would normally donate are, are stretching. Everyone is really kind of digging deeper just to figure out their own lives. How is this impacting Red Bucket and rescue in general? Oh my goodness. Well, thank you for asking. We've had the hardest year we've ever had. And certainly we know that the world has been impacted. Um, we have also been impacted. I, I think a lot of folks who traditionally are thinking about our horses and our life-saving work have just become consumed with trying to return to normalcy and get their kids back in school or figure out you know, their own lives and so therefore, we've noticed a steep decline, not because people have stopped caring. I think they've just forgotten a bit temporarily, and we've, we've felt that tremendous impact. And so while the need has increased, because I know as a result of floods and fires, there's been so much more need for rescue, but those people are busy rebuilding their lives and also trying to become find some kind of normal with COVID in tow. So I know it's a challenge and I hope people who perhaps haven't donated before or thought about rescue as an outlet for donation will consider it if their lives have already returned back to normal, then we know that there are a lot of others in need. So thank you for sharing that. Thank you, Lauren. And I know you have an annual fundraising gala um, just for our viewers to know, I learned about Red Bucket five years ago, was it? I was uh, watching a movie and at the end of the movie, it showed that the movie had been based on a true story and it took place in, at Red Bucket Rescue in Chino Hills. I was living in Newport Beach and I said, oh my gosh, I need to know more and took the drive out and was amazed by what I saw. And I've been supporting animal rescue for many, many years for dogs and horses. So yours is just a, an amazing, amazing organization. And the work that you do is so worthy. And I want our viewers to know how they can help, but also the work that you've done to create awareness and really spread the word is remarkable. Mm, thank you, Lauren. I, I think that it's the storytelling that captures people's hearts. Otherwise, they're just pictures or it's something that happens somewhere else that abuse and starvation and neglect is actually happening in our communities and in our backyards. And each one of these precious lives, they have a story. And um, we're hoping that we'll be able to continue to tell Myla's. Yeah, I hope so too. Uh, tell us, Tell us a happy story, because I know that when the horses come to you, the stories are sad, but you have so many remarkable happy endings, happy middles, happy dashes in between, oh, yeah. in between the day that they arrived at you at Red Bucket and then where they went and how their lives continued. I think it's important that people know that that's where their money is going. Oh, well, we're actually, we specialize in happy endings. That is uh, what we do. 
And uh, I would also love to extend a, a, you know, an invitation for your viewers to visit and they can set up an appointment. We do wonderful tours so that people can actually meet the horses and the many stories. Um, I just uh, popped in from outside and we have a herd of 13 geldings. We call it Olaf's herd. And I think, you know, many of those horses in the back and we have a number, all of those are happy endings. These are horses who absolutely are not placeable. They are, um, they've been traumatized and abused and they, all they think about now is what they're eating for breakfast and hanging out with their friends. And a few naughty horses like Elwell and Ranger, his sidekick, are thinking about trouble they can, that they can get into. Um, <laughs> they're, they're horribly entitled. And Baron is a horse that had been um, on his way to slaughter when he was 22 months old. He had two bow tendons. He had um, been, uh, they had hoped that he would be a racehorse, but he was too young and he broke down and he was seriously injured. He came to us and in the process had been degloved. And so we had two years of rehabilitation with him. We also put effort into retraining him to see if he'd be happy as an under saddle horse, but he absolutely was not. <laughs> he made that very clear. And so we gave him the gift of retirement, which he richly deserved and is out, you know, scratching the back of a buddy of his right now, living a, a wonderfully charmed life and be grateful, which is amazing. These horses are grateful. We have a little donkey named Buffy. I think you know Buffy. She um, she has written up for naughty behavior all the time. Uh, she came to us as an infant. Her mother had been intentionally run over by a truck. And uh, we tried very hard and spent the night with our vet trying to save Buffy's mom. And we were unable to when we raised Buffy by hand. And she has a charmed life. She lives with another donkey named Joey and a horse named Echo. And um, they're a little family unit and you know, they're delightfully happy. And then, you know, I could tell you stories of recent adoptions. We, even in COVID, we've had the most remarkable adoptions. And we've had um, two Mustangs uh, who went with a team member who also decided to take a mule. And uh, those, those horses are in a, a happy little family. We also have another horse who had been injured named Leo and re we rehabbed him. And he's a family horse now living in San Diego. Um, we have two donkeys that were adopted locally. And those donkeys went together and they have their own habitat and their own family. And there are dozens and dozens of happy stories. We love that. And I would love it if our viewers would come to visit you and meet the horses and the donkeys and the mules and, and see the amazing life-saving work that you're doing. I, I do want to give them a little bit more information about the Ruby Red Gala that's coming up in November. So tell us a little bit about how the gala works. And I know you don't have a uh, definite date yet, but we will keep sending our viewers to your website and ours. Uh, to stay up to date if they want more information on the gala, but tell us more about it now. Oh, wonderful. Well, traditionally the gala is in person and it's our biggest fundraiser of the year. And of course with COVID that changed everything. And last year we went virtual and had a great event. We'll be going virtual again this year. And um, the theme is um, a day in the life of Red Bucket. And so our, your viewers and our audience will be able to experience what, what is it really like from sunup to sundown down, and then in between, there's always activity. We rescued a horse named Mikkel uh, earlier in the year and he had been um, quite abused and left in a strip mall. And so we have footage of him and we are following Mikkel's story from rescue to where he is today, and sprinkled in. And of course, we'll have a wonderful auction. We are um, we have a live auction and also a silent auction, which we combine. We'll do that um, online, and we will also provide that uh, to folks 
two weeks ahead of time so that they can start bidding on their items. Um, that the auction's pretty fantastic. We have great trips and we also have wonderful household items and, and holiday items as well for people. So having had the experience of the live gala and the virtual gala, I can say that they're both wonderful. They're both loads of fun and the gifts and the opportunities to support Red Bucket and at the same time walk away with something of real value and, and super quality because everything you do is just top shelf. So thank you. And I know our viewers will check it out further. So where can they find more information about Red Bucket? How can they get involved, perhaps donate? Oh, wonderful. Well, everything um, is through our website, which is www.redbucketrescue.org. And if people want to inquire about volunteering, if people want to involve, uh, you know, inquire about um, perhaps coming for a tour or about our gala or any other information, they're welcome to e email us either through the website or view our website. Perfect. Susan, thank you so much for joining us today. And thank you for sharing this life-saving work that you're doing. I want everyone to know that it's, it's just God's work you're doing. And thank you. Thank you, Lauren. And we'll be back. <laughs>